Hey everyone and welcome back to the Let's Build series. In the last video I finished up making the UV map for Mina here and now I'm going to move on to texture painting. However, before I actually get started, I think everyone would appreciate a free brush pack for painting. But it doesn't come with any, which is disappointing. A good set of brushes would be helpful to everyone so that way you wouldn't have to build them yourself. So in the description below, I've left a direct link to a free brush pack from Blendswap.com. I've also made a separate download link because you have to make an account to download from that site and I hate having to make burner accounts for something that's supposed to be free. You can append the brushes into a new save file and save it as default so you can always have them. And now that I'm about to start painting, I have a quick word of advice for you, and that is to save both your file and textures often. Texture painting, in my experience, is very crash heavy and Blender does not auto save images. Pressing Ctrl S is not enough to actually save your images either. You have to manually go into the image editor and hit Alt S to save your images, or pull down this drop down here and hit save all images. You have been warned. So getting right into it, from the screen cap texture that I exported from GIMP last time, I had to clear the canvas somehow and was too lazy to swap to a brush with Erase Alpha, so I just decided to instead paint the canvas magenta. With the canvas at least monocolor, I was going to start laying out the base colors when I did a think about the stripes I placed on the ears two videos ago. Flush doesn't heal back in an angular way. There was no reason for these stripes to be here, so I cleared them. I then got out the paint bucket tool and began laying out my base colors. I began painting in my fur color when I got to the pelvis waistcoat region and I ran into the one issue that I had with joining these areas to begin with. The fur texture was bleeding into the waistcoat region, which had to be dealt with. I selected and removed the pelvis region from the UV space for a second so I could see if I could find anywhere else to put it, and couldn't. But the good news is there was enough space in between the waistcoat and the arm islands that I could separate them this way. I then proceeded to block out the rest of the model's color, trying to copy the colors I saw from my reference image. Once I was done with that, I decided it was time to do some cleanup. I got a fill brush with a ray self and started going to town on the magenta background. Then I made sure that there wasn't any more bleeding happening between the waistcoat and pelvis. I then decided that the fur color that I was using was way too bright and brought it into GIMP for some reason to edit it there. Once I exported it back, I was much happier with the result. Once I was done blocking out the colors, I was ready to create a new texture layer that I was going to use to paint on ambient occlusion and other dark shades. Called it AO Mina, did a dumb and put in the wrong resolution, and then mixed the two layers together with a mix RGB node set to multiply at a factor of one. Once I realized I didn't set the resolution properly, I fixed it by copy and pasting the correct one in, and then had to do it again because Blender's texture paint system likes to fuck me. Sometimes when I'm painting, when I hit Ctrl Z to undo a stroke I just made, it sometimes completely changes the brush I'm currently using. Or worse, sometimes it undoes so hard that it erases all of my progress up to that point because I hadn't saved in the past five minutes. Sometimes I can get my progress back by undoing hard enough to break causality, sometimes I can't. Save often, everyone. Anyway, I saved my new AO texture and decided the first place that I wanted to start painting was the face. However, I realized that before I begin, the flat material display in the studio renderer was not going to be helpful. Painting shadows is really hard when I can't see how they're affecting my base, but it's also hard to paint shadows when the material is already shaded. So I had to go into the shader editor and set up a custom shaderless material just so I could see what I was doing. By plucking the mix RGB node and diffuse shader into a mix shader node, I could swap between shaded and unshaded, test it to make sure they displayed correctly, and then tried to be a big brain by making a driver so I could turn the shader on and off in the 3D viewport, which ended up not working. Once that was done, I took the line I created when testing the shader and used it to shade the undersides of her hair by smearing it with a smudge brush. Found the HDR distracting and turned it off, then continued shading ahead with a faint black brush, only stopping occasionally to blend it together with the smudge tool. In writing this video, I'm kind of concerned that a lot of what I'm doing when it comes to texture painting becomes either a bit too abstract or too repetitive to describe. I can describe what my technique is, what I'm trying to do and why, but the last thing I think anyone wants me to do is to describe every single brush stroke. I have six hours worth of footage left to edit through and almost four of them is involving painting. I still got rigging and weight painting left to handle. How many times do you think I can really describe myself painting something? Especially considering painting is more of an artistic endeavor which is a subjective experience. I'm not really here to teach painting. I largely want to focus on the technical aspects of actually making a model and texture, so I'll only be glossing over things briefly that I do paint moving forward, unless there's more of a technical issue involved. If you guys have a different opinion on the matter or do want me to slow down with the painting, leave a comment down below. I'll try to find a better solution if everyone wants me to. On the subject of something more technical, I ran into a big one when I got around to painting the eyes. After taking a few passes at it and not really getting anything that was worth keeping, I realized an inherent issue in my approach. By painting the eyes directly onto the face, they would become static. I wouldn't have any good way to animate them. She couldn't blink or look around. I had to make a different approach. So what I was going to do was make a new 2D 
plane for which the eye is to sit on. I tried adding a 2D plane, didn't want to align it, so I deleted it, and instead just duplicated the face where the eyes were supposed to be and used that instead. At first, I thought I was going to put the eye texture into the base Mina texture, but thought against this. It would be far more efficient and future-proof to save it as a separate texture, so that in the future, if I had plans to make more eye shapes, this would allow me to make as many as I wanted, assemble them into a sheet, and then use a UV warp to sift through them. So I started setting up the material for the eye. I wanted them to be shaderless so they would be unaffected by light, like the old cartoons, and threw in a mix shader with some transparency so I could use it. Made some adjustments so the eyes would sit on the face better, started trying to get an eye shape that looked appropriate, then realized not only was the UV map oriented wrong, but it was also set up wrong in the shader. Started over. This time I made the eyes too big, symmetrized them over so that way she could properly see, and then decided that the eyes resolution was too small so I doubled it and started over again. I got frustrated dealing with things that I couldn't see, so I set the alpha mode to blend for the time being, and started drawing the eyes for what I think would be the fourth time. I had better luck this time around, I would actually end up keeping this version of the eye texture. Swapped back to alpha clip when I got the eye sufficiently drawn, and when I went to draw the pupils, realized I didn't actually solve my problem. I couldn't have the pupil on the eye layer either. The pupils were the part that were supposed to actually move around that I wanted to be able to control through a rig, and if need be, change the shape of her eyes so I could change her expression. This approach would exponentially increase the amount of shapes that I had to draw, because I would have to draw not only the shapes, but also the position the eyes were looking. Fortunately, I already had a solution to this, and that required an entirely new UV map to do it. But not before cleaning up some of the edges of the eye texture where the alpha layer got all scummy. So, to allow the pupils to be able to move along the eye texture, I had to make a new texture for them to sit in. I made a texture with the wrong resolution, plugged them into the mix node, and wondered why I wasn't able to see the black texture over the eye, just like I had made it. it. Took me an entire minute to realize that I had accidentally plugged the mix node into the alpha channel, going into the factor of the mix node, which controlled the transparency of the entire eye. Ugh. I tried again and got it correct this time. I took a moment to clean up the alpha and the eye texture by passing it into GIMP and running it through an alpha threshold function. Went to start painting the pupil texture and then realized that it was covering up the eyebrows, which was awkward. So to solve that, I took the base color from the eye shape texture and passed it through the factor, which was used as a mask to filter out the pupil texture. Since the eye was white and everything else was black, the only place that the pupil could actually show up was in the actual eye itself. I started painting the pupils, realized the resolution was too small, and started over. I seem to be doing that a lot this video. I drew what I thought would be a good pupil and realized that it wasn't being projected properly. The issue was I'd never actually implemented the new UV map to do anything. Matter of fact, I don't think I ever explained how I set that up at all. A UV is just a vector that tells the 3D software how to project a texture onto a model, and a model can have more than one UV map. For a UV warp modifier, this means that we can target our pupil map and move it around and not everything else. And fortunately, when I made the pupil UV, it was a full duplicate of my base UV, so we didn't have to do any extra work. So I went back to the shader editor, added some UV map nodes, and hooked them up to the proper texture. I adjusted the pupil map to get it looking right, and for the right side I had to mirror it on the x-axis to ensure that the pupil would not be mirrored, since I made it by symmetrizing the eye plane. I finally got tired of the eye textures using linear interpolation, realized that there were some image crusts at the points where the pupil was being masked out, then brought the eye texture back into GIMP to fix it. I ran it through a value threshold to force everything into binary black and white and exported it again, which fixed the problem. Then I activated maximum overdrive by jumping straight into rigging to make the eyes animatable. I added a root bone for future sake and started what would soon be the eye controller, but not before adding some last adjustments to the pupil. For instance, I added a wedge for detail and good luck. For the eye rig, I made two bones, one called eye base and the other eye target, had a brief look at a biblically accurate mouse, and then added a UV warp modifier to the model, the object from being the armature eye base and the object to being the armature's eye target. When I went to test the eye target, uh, the base had somehow been parroted to it, but the good news is the system still worked despite that. After resolving a custody dispute, I had full control over the scale of the pupils and where they would look at any given time. The problem was the texture was set to repeat in UV space, so I had to go and set it to extend instead. I went into layout mode to check the full model and was greeted by an abyss instead, and decided not to question it. Back in the UV editor, I noticed that the right eye was larger than the left, so I deleted it and symmetrized it over again. I had to remap the pupils again and realized I had set the wrong texture to extend. Fortunately, that was a quick fix and I had fully completed the eye control system. After some final adjustments, I could finally move on to painting the rest of the model, got done painting the crease between the eye and the nose, when it hit me, like that time a car did when I broke my wrist, I was going to have to make another fucking UV warp system for the mouth. So I made a new UV map called Mouth, made a new pair of bones to control the new UV warp, and in the mouth UV I selected everything and scaled them down to zero to clear the space. I then started to go about setting up the texture layer to display the mouth on the base texture with a mix node, made a new texture called Mouth, and added the UV map nodes to set the vector for the textures, had to make 
sure the texture was set to clip so that it wouldn't cover the whole model, and then had to unwrap the mouth because it was somewhere in that small UV singularity I made a few minutes ago. I would made the mouth island and texture really small for no good reason. After getting the resolution correct and pinning the mouth, I would made the new UV warp modifier and everything was going smoothly when Mina the Eldritch made herself known. Something catastrophic had happened and I have no idea why. For some reason, the base UV has suddenly fucked itself, but when I click on the mouth and eye UVs, they are perfectly fine. And watching back with retrovision and analysis in mind, it was like playing a video game with a younger sibling and you handed them the unplugged controller. Except there is no fun here, and I am an only child. Do you see these slots here in the UV warp mods? That's where I was supposed to load the UV maps I had made specifically for this system to work. All I had to do was put the correct UV map into that slot and everything would have worked properly. But instead, I had managed to compound the issue by trying to fix it using vertex groups to act as a mask. I eventually just gave up, duplicated the faces of the mouth, and moved it to a new material. And then after doing all of that, finally found the UV layer slot when it was already too late and no longer mattered. My wheels had spun for all those five minutes that I was doing the big thing to get it working. Unfortunately, not only were the hamsters dead, but there was enough centrifugal force that it was able to take off like a fucking helicopter. After I got done burying Ham Ham in the forever box, everything from this point in the video is going to be smooth brain sailing, which means no more big mechanical things are going to be happening. It's going to be pure texture painting, but it's also going to be a bit anachronistic because halfway through the texture painting process, I ended up getting distracted so hard I finished the entire character rig. And I'm not ready to split this into two separate videos because I did a dumb. So I'm about to gloss over what I got done painting in the span of two hours. Starting with the head, I increased the shading on the underside of the neck by using a fill gradient on the ambient occlusion layer. I struggled for a good bit trying to put shading around where the eye socket should be and then realized I should probably have a highlights channel for texturing so I could add shine to certain areas. I made a new texture node and connected it with a new mix node set to addition blending. I went on to paint some shading on the overcoat, under the collar, under the armpits, and then painted on the lapels along with some highlights and shadow. Felt that my material wasn't complex enough so I added vertex colors as well for additional shading because I'm an asshole. Using said vertex colors, I lined the inside of the waistcoat to shade it and then got distracted to add some hair on the top of Mina's head. Really I just took a tuft from the side of her cheek and then pasted it on top of her head to make some simple shapes. Went back to the waistcoat and started drawing where it would be buttoned together. Went over the area with some shade and finally got around to adding the button. However, it turns out that when I made the highlight layer, I put in the wrong fucking resolution again. Fixed that real quick and added some highlights to the button and her nose. I started adding wrinkles to the overcoat again by using the smudge tool to pull color from the shadows that I created and then started to draw the rest of them in. And I had drawn quite a lot of them. Shaded the inner waistcoat collar some more then got to working on where the elbows bend to make them nice and worn. Tried to use a gradient fill brush to try and paint the cuffs but gave up and used vert colors instead. And then Blender fucking crashed. Like Chekhov's fucking gun I warned at the beginning of the video to save your files and textures often. And fortunately I did. I literally saved all of my textures two seconds earlier so nothing was lost except for the vertex colors and the hair that I made which I didn't realize it was lost until much later. I probably should have pulled the autosave but I forgot. I finished the inner collar of the waistcoat, continued shading the arm some more at the fold of the elbows and at the cuff of the wrist. Added back the bird colors I lost there then went back to the waistcoat one final time to hit it with a gradient fill bucket tool set to multiply to darken the lower half and add back the vertex colors I lost here as well. One hour time skip later I started adding the hair back that I lost and gave her more this time since it looked better. I peeped the rig for a quick second and then got down to business painting a fur texture all over her body. This took a really big majority of the rest of the time. About 35 minutes or so was spent doing this. This is one of the brushes from the pack that I listened to earlier and it definitely helped a lot. Some notable things I did that didn't involve adding hair was adding shading to the pelvis region at the thigh gap, made the tail and feet pink to match her ears, added some hair strokes to these areas to make the transition more realistic, added some red flush to the bottom of the feet, some yellow on the top, and a few small line details. I went back to the overcoat one last time to add a gradient and some wrinkles, then I put some vertex colors on the inside of it to darken it. And for the last and final details, we come to the ears. I wasn't going to do anything too crazy, just a quick gradient and some highlights and move on to something else, when I noticed something wasn't right. It took me all of finishing the texture to realize, but the right ear was being projected upside down. I had apparently stacked the UV island wrong all those hours ago, took a minute or so to correct it, and finished painting the rest of the hair on the back of the ear. And I finally finished the texture for this character. And all we have to do now is rig the character and we'll be done. But that'll have to be for next time. I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe or leave a comment telling me that you like this video. It's one of the only ways that I know that it's worth continuing. If you want to support what I do, you can support me on Ko-Fi or check out any of my other important links down below. But other than that, yeah, that's all I have to say. So see ya.